Hello, hi. Welcome to your favorite Makoti podcast, Makoti Unveiled. I'm your host, the resident Makoti, Sia Tewu. Thank you so much for joining us again. Today, we are talking about money, 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 money. Remember that? Money. We're talking about money. And we are joined by a professional in the financial industry. His name is Andy Lejonas. Kuti, how are you? I'm very, very well, thanks. Yeah, how are you doing today? I'm well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, we're talking about money. Yeah, I think that's what they say. Um, and it can be a very contentious topic to talk about in marriage. Um, and as somebody who can speak to us about finances, um, Mr. Jonas here is going to take us through some of the things that you as Omakoti need to be jacked up on. Ne? You know I got you girls. Okay, Budi, let's talk about... Okay bank accounts. I want to start from the beginning. Bank accounts. How many bank accounts do we have in a marriage? <laughs> it's a great place to start. <clears throat> um, I think as a starting point, um, and, I, and I say this about my children, that every human being on earth must have a bank account of their own. Okay. Right? That's a good starting point. I think it's just empowering. It allows you to make some financial decisions of your own. Okay to think a little bit further into the future, everyone starts okay. with one. Okay. When you get married, mm. then I think you can start thinking a little differently or perhaps more progressively. I myself have a bank account. My wife has a bank account, but we have a third. We have a household bank account. Okay. And the reason this works for us, and this is not always for everybody, but what works in this instance is that there's money SE Fagagla bank account each. Okay. That takes care of the absolute routine monthly expenses of the household. Right? That means whatever's left in my bank account is for me to do with as I wish. Okay. No one's asking you for that. No one's looking at that. As long as my obligation towards the household account is met. This takes a lot of the discussion, a lot of the arguments away because... I'm not even dealing with a person anymore. That's my account to the household account. As long as that transaction is met and it's automated. Okay, pause. This is easy. Wallet. These accounts, ne? That and everyone has an individual account and then there's the household account. The household account, do we contribute 50-50? Or is the percentage based on how much each of the parties earn? So does the one who earns more contribute more? I like the question because what it does do is it forces you to have a conversation about your relationship with money. Okay. So it's not just about contribution. Okay. If I earn twice what you earn, but I'm reckless with money, and I know this about myself, and you earn half what I earn, but you are responsible with money, then it's not just about contribution, is it? It's actually about our financial management and survival as a couple. Okay. So the contribution part forces us to talk about our relationship with money, okay. how I spend, how I save. So I might have the same contribution as you, I might not. That's a decision we need to make together. So each each to their own. Each to their own. Let's rewind, because now we're already married. Mm. Now the accounts are already here. But he's not here. <laughs> when people are in a relationship, I need to know. Abejola. Are they talking about finances? Or is this something we only visit after we've gone down the aisle and met with the pastor or whoever the registered professional is? Sir, back to you. I was just skinnering with my girls. But now sure. we're going to include you back in the conversation. Are we talking about money before we get married? Should Omagodi know how much Ubei is earning? Or is it only a discussion we get into? Once we married. So there's two questions there. Oh my God. <laughs> One is, are we talking about money? And two is, do I know how much he earns? Mm. These, this is not the same question. Mm. The first question, are we talking about money, is an absolute yes. Before. Absolute yes before. Have your uncles gone to the lady's house yet? Uh, it, does, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. In fact, if you, if you want to have the conversation about money on date one, I think you should. I think. Who's also you, Goldie? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? And from my lack. And from my lack. 
I want to understand your relationship with money. So what? That's what, actually all I'm see, interested now in. He's setting his own conversation. This guy, but I'm. <laughs> now I need to address this thing. What what conversation are we having on date number two about money? Okay, let me let me let me create. Let's the pretend example. now we are at the. We're restaurant. on a date. Yeah, yeah. We're on a date. Hmm. What's your favorite holiday destination? Okay, and I answer. Like, I want to go anywhere by the beach. The beach. Durban or the Cayman Islands? Ooh, I've never left the country, so I'd love to leave the country. Okay. I love European travel. If we had to go, how would we go? How would we do it? I'd pack my bags and just meet you at the airport. I mean, could we afford it together? Can you afford it? Ah, can you there is my us? conversation with you. Can we afford to take us? I don't know why we played make believe. <laughs> <laughs> ah! There's my, there's my conversation with you. Already, I can tell that you assume little or no responsibility financially okay. for such things. Okay. It may not be an accurate assessment at this early stage, but it's a clue. Okay. Which leads me to further discussion. Have these conversations. I see. Not about unamalini, but. Do you assume some responsibility for financial outcomes? Okay. All right. So the general concept of money, the principles. The principles it. around I it. I think that's an important thing. At some point, when you know each other well enough, you can even ask. I mean, do, do I grew up in a conservative home, right, where my father was a provider financially. Do you, as a woman today, feel like that is half your responsibility or... Do you feel like that's a man's responsibility based on how you grew up? That's an important discussion because it may offend my partner if I'm not going to get into it. That's my responsibility. But she's a professional working woman. It may offend her that... Hey, bo, and what morning... makes you think I can't pay for my own lunch? Absolutely. Now that's a conversation that needs to take place. Mm -hmm. And that's about your relationship with money. It's not about how much money you have. And I think that's where the secret lies. So, would you say Omakoti need to, to be more open about having the conversation and not thinking it will make them look a certain way? Because I think a lot of people think once you talk about money, it's suddenly, hi, Bosisi, you just met the man. Why are you already trying to get into his pocket? Yeah. Look, I mean, I, there's, there's a certain level of discussion you can't have too early, obviously. But... If Ungumagoti, who wants to be kept, right? Mm -hmm. I want to be a kept woman, mm -hmm. kept mm -hmm. wife. I think there's a point where you need to be honest about that too. Okay. Because I think the, the fear of appearing like a gold digger can actually create conflict later on when you then decide to be kept. Because now some chapters is figile Okay. And he has no expectation of this side of you. He has no sight of this version of you. Yeah, na uchate a professional that was working, that had an income. And at some point in your career, you decided there's enough money in this home <laughs> that I can actually go to where I really wanted to go all along. If that happens without some kind of expectations created, I think that creates conflict. And that's what starts gold digger type discussions. If my woman, whoever that is at whatever stage, says to me, you know, my dream is to have my man take care of everything. My knight in shining armor. So I can put my feet up and get manicures and pedicures all day long. And I create, as a woman, as Umagoti, that expectation. He has an opportunity to buy in or opt out. I see. SMS stop to 34089. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so... When, when we talk about money, we, we can't shy away from the conversation of, especially this is an issue in the black community where maybe I shouldn't call it an issue. Our cultures are different. Um, people do di different things in different ways, different strokes for different folks. Now, people in the white community, when they get married, John and Sarah, they do their thing. Bye, Susan, because Susan is mom. Bye, Susan. Bye. But in the African context, it's not the same thing. Uasanda and Ayanda, when they decide to get married, they can't just say bye to mama. 
it, it's something that just doesn't happen in the African community. Now, how do you address issues or um, money relating to family? Because you guys are now a young couple. You're starting your own little family. But maybe people may have responsibilities back home. Some are building. Some have unemployed parents. It can it can be a variety of things. How is that conversation approached? Is it something, it's, 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 again, is it another conversation you're supposed to have, you know, up front? Listen, I want to marry you, but I want to still build a house for my parents mm. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I mean, I think the more you have up front, the better, right? So, but sometimes... It's not always obvious what's going to come on the other side of certain life hurdles, right? Mm -hmm. It's not always obvious. So it's not always possible to have everything up front. Um, the family one's an interesting one for me because um, having, having actually some lived experience with this one, um, it's less about money and more about communication. I think, you know, the rands and cents of it matter. They matter. Because if I, I, in this home that I head up, I'm sending money to your home where I don't live, where I don't come from, there's a risk of some resentment being built over time. All right, so we've got to manage that. We've got to manage and acknowledge the sacrifice that's coming out of this home. Um, but even before we manage the sacrifice that's coming out of this home, I think it's important that we find some kind of hold-handing kumbaya agreement ne? that this home leye to inner priorities is Mbalu's Tile. And we and we if we have to write them down on a piece of paper, we do. That prior, priority number one is X. Okay. And thou shalt not compromise on priority number one. So we will only get to family should we tick off one, two, three, four priorities. Then Amanda Wetu will allow us to either support X, Y, and Z initiative at your home or not. And I think if we stick to some kind of code like that, we trust one another with it. Because you might have 100,000 rand in your pocket, in your bank account, but you and I both know that priorities, zala, paglomzi, have not been met yet. Mm -hmm. So that money can't go home yet. And that's a conversation that I think will make it easier for you as well, as Umagot, to have with your own family. Okay. To say, I have certain obligations towards umziwam, kala. Before I can come here, guys. Now, let's talk about... I'm going to need our friends, or Magodi, that come from different cultures, to please bear with me and please teach me. Um, I come from the Eastern Cape, so please, a lot of my... References. References will be closer. I do not know what Indotakazi is. In Sitswana, in Sipedi, Kachivenda... I don't know what those what what to call them, but that would be your husband's sisters, Amadota guys. That what that's what they called in his course. Now let's, for argument's sake, say Umagodi is married to you, and she and she and you have siblings, Ungupoti, and now your siblings have ordinarily come to you and said, "Budi, I need a new pair of Jordans. Budi, I would like a PlayStation." Buddy, I need to go, whatever. But now there's this new lady in your life and you are now married and you're starting a home. Do your siblings then come to her and say, Sisi, can I have a PlayStation? Or do they come to you because they've been coming to you and just ask for the PlayStation? How, how does it work? <laughs> and because all of a Sunday now it's, Hi, now we don't have access to Imali Kaputi because this lady has come in and she's taking Imali Kaputi. So can you explain then um, how Omakoti should navigate that scenario? Yeah, you know, um, the one, the one, uh, the scenario you're talking about now is actually a very contentious one, particularly should Uputi leave this earth. Yeah? Um, so, so I want to almost start that with that end in mind. The There's no formula. There's no right way to do it because the... The answer is very relationship based. Okay. So should um, Abandwana Basekaya relate really well with Umagoti, then those relationships become organic. Yes. They take a life of their own. If that if those relationships do not form in in an organic way, 
that I have to manage them, then it's a different scenario. And I think you can't force it one way or the other. It, it, it will happen the way it happens. Um, so I think that the first point I want to make is that it's very much a very organic relationship thing. Whether Abundana Basakaya come to me or they come to Makotiwam. Depends on the relationships. Why this is a particularly important subject for me, especially if you get married older, right? Especially if you get married older, uh, when you have accumulated assets, you've got stuff of value, is that I have a, let's say I have a property or two or three, and a car or two or three, and an offshore investment or two or three. Should I die? or whoever in the family who's going to maybe feel some kind of way about the things um, that I have accumulated in my life, perhaps even with before you, Umakotiwam, and how those things belong to this family. So as my current wife, you may find yourself in awkward conversations about marital assets because the conversation has not been spread wide enough mm. because I have not taken the time to say to my family, umziwamlo. And my wife has custody of everything umziwam in my absence. If I haven't taken the time to make that clear, not just verbally, but legally as well, mm. I've got to put that down and codify it in some kind of not just um, uh, will, legally valid will, um, but in, in beneficiary nominations on RAs, on all sorts of things, that it is clear to the law as well as to my family who the person is that should have custody over my assets and, and financial decisions. Those things become very, very important. And I repeat, particularly as you get older, Are we ready for these grown-up conversations? <laughs> like, I feel like these conversations are so grown-up. And, um, yeah, adulting takes quite a bit of responsibility. Um, and you have to verbalize quite a bit. Um, you can't think or hope people are mind readers, hey. Now, speak to us about making sure that things are in place and the importance thereof. Mm. Um, whether it's policies for children, whether it's, you know... I want to go away once in a while. There yeah. must be a holiday yeah. that's happening there. So talk to us about making sure that financially as as um, families or um, are, are, are navigating things in their, in their households, how to make sure that everything is in place. Yeah. See, the first thing I want to say, right, um, is that one of, one of the most important things for any couple to get right around money is the ability to be broke together happily. <laughs> Pause. Please say that louder for the people at the back because there's people at the back, ne? So look there. There's your camera, my brother. There, right there. There are people at the back. This is your chance for, to put up the volume. <laughs> for, the, for the people at the back, it is absolutely critical for you as a couple to learn how to be broke together happily. It's key critical. If you don't sure. know how to be broke together, there's problems that you perceive that are not problems. There's issues in the relationship that emerge that shouldn't be issues. Being broke is just being broke. That's all it is, it's nothing more. It doesn't mean he loves me less. It doesn't mean she cares about me any less. It just means you're broke, that's all. It's not a a universal phenomenon beyond the scope of understanding. Kupele imali. Aiko. Full stop, that's all. <laughs> right? petrol. That's it, peli petrol, right? And our ability to, to have a sense of humor and find um, joy and laughter in the midst of it all, to me, is one of the key success factors of any relationship. Let's laugh at our poverty. It's not forever. One day we're going to look back and say, hey, and now we're having caviar, right? I think it's okay to be broke. That's the first thing. It puts less pressure on both parts to see into the future. Is that not romanticizing poverty? 
It, I think it can be. Okay. But I think it's okay to romanticize it. If we, if we look at each other in the eye and say, let's romanticize poverty today. Tomorrow we'll worry. But today, let's romanticize it. Okay. I think that's okay too. Uh, there's enough things to worry about. So that's, that's sort of part one of my answer. The second part of my answer is that we can't solve every financial need today. Okay. My kids need an education policy. We need a retirement uh, plan. We need an estate plan for what happens when one of us dies or both of us dies. We need wills. We need provision for our debt. We need, there's so many things we've got to solve for. Now, even just monthly, we need to make sure that we've got uh, solar and boreholes. And like we, we, it's impossible to do it all, right? Unless you are a wealthy couple. For most of us, you've got to prioritize. You've got to say, let's do this one first. And then the next one, and then the next one. So the conversation to me is about priorities, right? It's about writing down in a piece of paper, what are all the things ideally, let's dream. Write down all the things ideally we could do. So as Bales, I was being 20, this Bales, I was being 15. This is if money wasn't an issue. Money just... wasn't an issue, right? And we take your 20, we take my 15, we see how many of them overlap. We have a list. Now of that list, what's number one? What's the most important thing? Also, What's the urgent thing? Because some of them are very, very important, but they can wait. Some of them are less important, but they're urgent. They're urgent. So we've got to have an important, urgent kind of dynamic to that conversation too. But let's write down a list of priorities. What's number one, number two, number three? And we start there. Okay. We start with that conversation about how do we get number one, two, and three in place? When our circumstances change in a year or two or three, then we can take a look at number four and number five and number six. Because it's totally depressing to look at all the things you can't do. Mm. Let's start looking at the things we can. That would be my advice to Omar Kut. Okay. Now, what happens in the setup? You, you mentioned it earlier that men want to be provi uh, providers, you know. Some of us do. You just... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm so animated today, but anyway, um, men want to be providers. What happens then if the woman earns more? Mm. Because now suddenly she brings home the bacon and when you are just. See, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to be very controversial about this one. Um, I'm going to roll the dice here. It's a, it's a difficult one. Most men in my social circle and even professional circles don't know how to be in relationships with women that earn more money than they do. And that manifests in very difficult arguments and conflict because they don't know how to play that role. It's a manhood that is taught to us from childhood with examples from my grandfather, my father, my this, them. I've never had this example. I don't know how to play this role. I don't know what it is to be a man when I'm not the breadwinner. I, I genuinely don't know what my function is in that space. I have the, had the privilege of being surrounded by very powerful and strong women in my life. Right? I've seen, including my mother, strong, independent black women and how that world looks. I've had that privilege. But I will say, as advice to the greater community, I don't think enough men have had an example of what that looks like. First half. Second half. I also don't think enough women want to play breadwinner role to a man. I love him. He's beautiful. He's amazing. But after six months of me paying the bills, he doesn't look as good looking anymore. His jokes aren't as funny anymore. Okay, but okay, let, let, let's not make him not pay anything. He just earns a bit less. So it's not like he's sitting at home when a while you in your power suit in a boardroom. So he's also going to work. You're saying let's stay away from the extremes. Yeah, let's 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 not make him dead broke. Let's not make him a church mouse. You know? Let's make him also a professional. He works, except when are you in as a woman, you earn 20K, he earns 15K. So he's also earning money, but it's just... 
I mean, if we're talking if we're talking about marginal differences, then the conversation hasn't changed from 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 what I've been saying all along. Okay, um, what what happens if it's double? I, I think if it's double, then we then we then we start having we, we start feeling dynamics. He can afford an American car. She can afford a German sedan. Yes. I think we start feeling dynamics. What then? I, I, I think the conversation there again is less about money and more about more uh, family, religious and social and cultural dynamics about the couple. I think it's more about who am I in this relationship if I am not this? Because all I know is this. I think it's more about that. I think if you go and you earn double your husband. I heard a, I heard a radio interview some months back actually um, on one of the talk radio stations where a woman was actually offered a job. She interviewed and was offered a job that she accepted on condition they pay her less. She said, I can't take this job at this price tag because it will destroy my relationship with my husband. Sounds like a her problem to me. <laughs> Cannot work. Sounds like a her problem to me. As That's just me. I think we need to be very realistic about these dynamics. Is it right? No. Does it happen every day to people we know? Absolutely. Absolutely. <sighs> yes. <laughs> I, mm, mm, what does that look I, mean? It means it means I'm not understanding how we look. Money is great, right? But it can't be the be all and the end all of the relationship. It should never be. So so now. A job that could provide so much and do and and I mean I don't know the lady I don't know the the show or whatever, but the fact that you are now turning or not necessarily turning it down but asking them to give you a reduced salary because it will re ruin your relationship. For me, it says a lot more about the relationship than the money, um, because. Okay. Well, let me let me maybe uh, translate it a different way. Um, one of the, the the top, I think the top three causes of uh, relationship breakups, breakdowns, mm -hmm. um, is infidelity, violence, and money. Mm -hmm. Those are the top three, all right? So money is in the top three reasons relationships fail. Now, wh what that tells me is that never underestimate the conversation about money in a relationship. It's in the top three. Of all the breakups on earth, <laughs> one of the top three reasons is money. So don't underestimate that. So if the power balance that money brings or imbalance that money brings to the discussion is something that we're aware of, also don't underestimate that. Maybe the answer is in deeper communication. Maybe the answer is elsewhere. I don't know. Mm. All I'm saying is don't underestimate the value or the power that money brings to that imbalance. Mr. Jonas, thank you so much for your time. You're absolutely That's welcome. It's we been fun. That's all we have time for today. Bye-bye, Standwa.